Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto, bring down to bite-sized pieces. So today, it's not about the news, it's about a question. And uh, this question came to me from an old friend, uh, Dave the Pilot. In between time, Dave's time of uh, flying millionaires around the world and uh, apparently uh, playing a bunch of video games on Twitch, here he is right here, Van Sickness, uh, he wants to know what I would do with $100,000 and what I would invest into. And it wasn't just Dave that asked this question. It's been a bunch of different people who have asked this question. And uh, it's gone everywhere from like, what would you do with you know an extra 25 bucks a month to what would you do with 100,000? So I need to try to answer that in the best way possible and the most comprehensive way possible in this video. And uh, first thing uh, I'll tell Dave and everybody else is this, is that um, everybody loves you when you're making these price predictions and you're like, hey, this is gonna go to the moon and it's gonna go up this way and it gives people hope. But I try to be very cautious on that because in crypto, as we've seen before, things go up uh, massively and they go down uh, astonishingly low. So you'll have big peaks and valleys. So like this, like when I did a price prediction video on January 7th, I talked about Voyager going from 29 cents uh, to $30. And uh, people were pretty happy when the next couple of weeks it went from 29 cents to 60 cents. Then it went to a dollar. Then it went to three dollars. Then five dollars. Then seven dollars. Everybody loves you because they think I'm going to be rich fast, and that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants to be rich fast. But I have to stress this: uh, this is not a get rich quick game. This is uh, you got to be in it for the long haul, and we'll go over that uh, in a bit. And actually, Voyager went from seven dollars back down to five to three to under two bucks. And now I think it's around $2.30 or somewhere around there. So uh, just so you know, when I make these, these different types of things, it's at the end of the year and you have to be an investor. If you wanna be uh, a gambler and do leverage trading and you know do a, you know, 50 to 100 extra money, this is uh, not the channel for you. And I will say thanks for stopping by, but uh, the door is that way because uh, you're not gonna get that here, sorry. So let's jump into it. So first of all, I need to start talking to everybody about uh, the big thing is what's your goals? Because Dave's goals are different than my goals. My goals are different from your goals. So you gotta really just de determine what you wanna do in life uh, as far as like investing. Then we're gonna talk about a mindset because that's the most important part about investing. Really, it comes down to mindset. You can invest all day long. I know a lot of rich people and uh, I know a lot of rich people who have lost a lot of money because their mindset's awful. They can do it once, but then they lose it and they're like, well, I don't know what happened. Well, your mindset sucks. And then we're gonna talk about all in or DCA or dollar cost average, doing your own research. And then finally the cryptos that I would invest into if I had an extra hundred bucks a month or a hundred thousand just laying around like Dave talks about. Okay, so the first thing is this, what's your goals? I don't know what your goals are. And uh, again, on this channel, it's investment opinion, not investment advice. I can't tell you what to do. This is just what I would do with my own money. And when Dave said, what would you do with 100,000 laying around? I was like, honestly, first thing I would do is I take a look at the houses in my neighborhood. Uh, especially I would also go on uh, Air DNA, which is a website where you can find where all the different uh, people are renting Airbnbs and look for houses in that area. And I would take 100,000 and I would do a down payment because you need at least 20% uh, for investment properties. And I would get an investment property, uh, another one, and roll it into an Airbnb. That's what I would do uh, for uh, a chunk of that 100,000. And then of course I would invest into, into crypto, but those are my goals. Again, my goals are not your goals. So uh, we did a video on that. You can check it out, I'll link at the very end. Now that's what, not what you wanna do, but what I really wanna talk about is that everybody's different, right? So like if you're in your 20s, maybe you're you, in your 20s, you got two ways to look at things. Either you're in the long game, like look, I'm just here until, you know, my 40s, 50s, and 60s, I'm just gonna keep investing and, you know, go that route, and I've got a long way to go. Or you're like, I wanna make money quick, and uh, I wanna be a little bit of a gambler. Well, your risk tolerance is a little bit higher than mine. I'm in my 40s and uh, getting older every day, so my goal is a little bit different. Now, it doesn't matter the age. You could be 60, like, I still wanna get rich today. Sure, okay, but this is gonna be a little bit harder and it's gonna be a little bit more riskier uh, if that's if I was in that position. Again, can't tell you what to do. So you have to determine what are your goals, first of all, about what you wanna do uh, over a time frame. And I think that's pretty much uh, the bigger type of issue. And then we really wanna take, take a look at uh, the mindset. And the mindset here, and this is gonna help you a lot as far as like the history, because it doesn't matter how much money you have. Like, like I said before, 
I've known people who had millions and they made it you know, uh, once and they just blew it on stupid stuff. You see it all the time in like professional athletes and boxers and things like that. They have a ton of money and they just, their minds just, they don't have the mindset to hold on to it and just, you know, let it grow. So the thing that I want to make mention here is we got to back up and we got to take a look at things like uh, the dollar and talk about, let's get the elephant out of the room. What if we just kept a hundred thousand bucks into a savings account? Well, you can do that, but here's the thing. There's this thing called inflation and that's about 2% every year, depending on what year you're in. I'm not going to get into that, but, uh, I want you to stop thinking about the dollar as like, I have this many dollars. I want you to start thinking about the dollar as to what can I purchase with that dollar and the purchasing power of the thing that you are in possession of. How much can I purchase with this dollar? How much can I purchase with this cryptocurrency? How much can I purchase with this asset, with gold and silver and homes? And how much can I sell and do other things with? That's the big question. So like with the dollar, you have to understand when your grandparents were like, I used to be able to buy a, a truck with a nickel. I mean, maybe they could because the, 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 the power of the purchasing power of the dollar was so high uh, back in the day, but because of inflation and different things with Federal Reserve Banking, you can just see over time, <clears throat> a dollar that was worth a dollar in 1913 is worth a nickel. Uh, now, probably much, much less. And actually now with the uh, printing of the dollar, with the quantitative easing, with the trillions that are being put in, uh, you can see there's an inverse relationship between the uh, purchasing power of the dollar and the amount of dollars that are being pushed into circulation, which makes sense, right? We hear about all the time in like a Zimbabwe or or, or a Germany or, uh, or or Greece, where they just like uh, just print money and print money, and the value of the of the, of the fiat of the cash goes down because there's so much in circulation. And uh, as of and this just only takes us like 2010. As of February 10th, 2021, there was two trillion worth of Federal Reserve notes in circulation, and that's 20, yeah, February 10th. So right here, we're only looking at 800 uh, billion. So uh, the purchasing power of the dollar is way down. So let's just get that out of the way. Me personally, can't tell you what to do. Uh, I'm not gonna keep a bunch of money in savings because it just erodes. I need to put it into assets that appreciate. So what would I do? Well. If you want to take a look at like, I mean, land and and uh, and houses, that's fine. Also on stocks and equities, that's that's good too. But uh, if you want to take a look at something that would actually more, I guess, bang for your buck, we'll say like that, right? So this is a a graph or not a graph, but just an image that talks about if you invested a thousand dollars ten years ago. Actually, it's more like eleven because I've had this thing for like a year. So if you invested a thousand dollars into Google, it would be six thousand. It's pretty good. 600%, good for you, X, uh, 6X. Facebook would be 9,000, Amazon 22,000. Netflix, my favorite, 34,000. Tesla 159, which is still, I mean, fantastic. If you're taking a look and going, if I put a thousand bucks 10 years ago, 11 years ago, I can now have 159,000, that's fantastic. Or if you put a thousand, you can have 237 million into Bitcoin. So that's not too bad. But how does that work? Because I mean, does it just keep going up uh, forever and and how are these cycles and uh, what are you talking about these pits let me just take you down a little quick path if you're not familiar with it everything follows bitcoin right now maybe in the future it won't but there's these things called the four-year cycles thing called a halving bitcoin is created around 2009 stoshi nakamoto i think we all know that or most of us do but there's a thing every four years called the halving and what that means is that uh, these bitcoin miners they 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 use these, these motherboards, these uh, specialty ASIC miners, whatever miners that they have, they solve these complex problems and they get a Bitcoin every 10 minutes. There's so many Bitcoin, you know, per block. Well, there's, let's say you get like 5,000, right? From the very beginning. Now in 2012, this thing called the halving, the same amount of work, same amount of power, but you're gonna get like 2,500 Bitcoin instead of the 5,000 or whatever, whichever one it was, I always forget. So you have the same amount of demand but you have half the amount that it's actually coming in in the supply. So what that means, same demand, half the supply, price usually goes up. So the halving happened in 2012. Then in 2013, it exploded to 1132. That became unsustainable. People were like, this is crazy. And then it just dropped down. There's a big dip a year after. Then there's a reset. The same thing happened in 2016. There was a halving, about 1,000. Went up 20x to around 20,000 almost, all time high in 2017. A big dip, and then there's a reset. And the same thing's happening again, we think. We're not 100% sure, but it's, been, it's happened the last eight years. Good chance it could happen again. So 
in 2020, uh, the price was 29,000. And then in 2021, so far, we've seen, we've seen 65,000. But there's been dips and valleys along the way. And uh, some people will say, well, Rob, I got to get rich now because it's, this is, it's, it's do or die. So unless you really need it now, you got to understand, there's another four-year cycle coming right around the bend. So don't worry so much about, I got to make it now. Look at these cycles and see what, what things are going. And we'll get into the, exactly the infrastructure that's being laid down in just a second. But the thing that I think about this is people think, well, I got to get in now. So I had to dump all my money in and that'll be that. No, you don't. And then uh, people have been telling me that, Rob, you don't know what you're talking about because this is a bull, this is a bull market and we're going to go up forever. Well, look, man. Uh, every single bull market, there's been pullbacks. And we can see it in the last bull market. We had a pretty big run up when it was a thousand bucks and it went to like two or 3,000. But then there was a 30% drop. Then we saw it again and it went up to four or 5,000. And we saw another a 40% drop. And the same thing happened. It goes up and it goes down, up and down. So the thing is, is like people say, you should just dump it all in. You can dump it all in. You can do what I talk about as far as like going all in. We'll get to that. Uh, but in all honesty, uh, men mentally, can you do that? Mentally, can you, can you, if you're Dave, can you put your hundred thousand dollars in today at 30, whatever, 33,000 words at July, what is it? July 7th, uh, July 8th. Okay. Um, and just put it in there and just be like, well, if it goes to 20,000, no big deal. Or maybe there's a better option. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So just remember, this is another way to look at things. This is 27, 2016, 2017. You go up, a little bit down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay. So there's going to be drops. So mentally, you have to prepare yourself for the extreme volatility. There's not so much volatility in uh, stock market. They look at something and go, wow, we're down 6% today. Uh, we should, this is crazy. We got to, you know, we're going to jump out the window. Uh, for crypto, we call it a Wednesday. Nobody cares. So just be aware that is what's going on. And then when I see this and I see all these things that are happening right here, people will say, well, why are there so many dips going all the way up? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, people like to take profits. Those are the smart traders, right? They will, they will buy, you know, a little bit lower at the, you know, down at this like lower part of this 38% down here. And then when it goes up, they'll take a bunch of profits and it'll slide down a little bit and they'll buy back and they'll come, come on a fourth, right? There's one. Some people will say it's manipulation and they'll say, well, there's just these whales that are manipulating. And some people will talk about how uh, there's these news stories that crash the market. And of course that is a, is a contributing factor. And then, uh, you know, some people will say, well, it's just overvalued and, and it just kind of crashes down because people just think it's overvalued. All those things could be correct, but I will just say this. I don't know the percentage of what it is as far as like what crashes the market at each time. And fr frankly, I really don't care because I'm in here for the long haul. But think about this way. What if it's not those big reasons? What if it's because that the infrastructure right now just in, isn't in play? See, I thought in 2017 that why would anybody sell their Bitcoin? Because this is the future. This is one of my fatal flaws. I always think people are like me. The infrastructure really isn't there for like big, big, big institutions to come in and to really be a part of it. Retail can only push us so far, but when you're like a BNY Mellon or you're a BlackRock with, you know, 10, 30 trillion assets under management, that's big money. And when we get big money like that, that's the big thing. So there was this great interview and I'll link at the very end. Uh, this is Caitlin Long. Um, she is uh, one of the heads of the... Um, uh, Avanti Financial Group over in Wyoming. Smart lady. Uh, I think she's a lawyer, Harvard Business School, you know, uh, knows a lot. Then we got Alex Mashinsky over here, uh, head of Celsius, uh, one of the uh, founders of Voice Over Internet Protocol. And she deals a lot with the big players in the space and big older financial institutions because they have a bank in Wyoming. It's going to be cryptocurrency bank. And she talks about like, look, she goes, last, the last bull run in 2017 was just the beginning. This bull run, we're building the infrastructure and things are going well. She's like, but the people that I talk to, 
they don't have everything in place that we need to be. So she goes, this is kind of like a landing or like, like a, a launch pad. And she goes, I think that the next four year cycle is going to be pretty big. Now, does that mean that uh, you can't make uh, massive gains or I can't make massive gains in this market? No, but for us to go from a market cap of $1.4 trillion to $50 trillion, I think is pretty unreasonable. Do I see like an $8 trillion, $9 trillion, $10 trillion market cap? Sure. But the big money and everything else that could potentially happen is in the long run. And that's usually what it comes down to. It's all about the big money play or the big long investment. So there's another thing that I want to talk about real quick is that as far as like the investment strategy is you have to understand that uh, to get your mind right, you have to deal with stuff like this. You have to deal with stupid stories about how... Uh, this government is banning crypto and this is getting out and uh, Elon, the car salesman, tweets about this. So you have to understand that these are just stories and they move the markets uh, here and there, but in the long run, it doesn't really matter. So this is, I love this meme. So when you start hearing about China, which you will, uh, just know that China bans Bitcoin every single year and they've already banned it a thousand times, but the mainstream media loves to talk about it every time. You know why I like to talk about it? Because it gets clicks and it gets eyeballs uh, to watch them or read their blog post or whatever else it is. So just so you know, uh, China has banned Bitcoin and cryptocurrency since 2017. And uh, they just have been doing more crackdowns and tightening up the loopholes. So don't pay attention so much to that. Also on top of that, I wanna show you this great website called 99 Bitcoins. It's called Bitcoin Obituaries. And this takes place from, uh, ooh, let me see here. Uh, let's do all. And when you take a look at this as far as all, these are all the times that Bitcoin has been declared dead by the main lamestream media. And you can see it at the price points of like 14 bucks and da, da, da. Look at that. Bitcoin has died 422 times. And let's see, the most recent one, June 21st, Bitcoin is worth exactly zero. Same thing we've been talking about for the last, uh, gosh, 10 years. <laughs> so deal, just know that you're going to see the FUD. You're going to see all these things. But when you look at, if you watch my show, uh, you're going to know that how many different uh, institutions and retail investors and big money players are getting into the game every single day and how many partnerships are happening. And what's going to happen is really what it comes down to is just uh, inevitable. And then if you really want to take a look and uh, go back further, take a look at things like this. I'm old and I remember when stories like this were coming up. Internet's a fasting pad. That passing fad as millions give up on it. This is really what people thought. They thought, first of all, they thought that the internet would be just a way to read blog posts or be like a big Dewey Decimal System. If you're old, you know what I'm talking about. And it became a lot more than that. So just be aware of what's happening. Also, this is a nice little story. In 97, Jeff Bezos went to the Harvard Business School and they told him that he was a moron and he needed to sell and get out to places like Barnes & Noble because uh, his product sucked, essentially. I think we know how that worked out. And then uh, there's other things like this, like you're gonna hear about FUD stories about people trying to ban crypto and everything else. Well, the telephone industry, <laughs> that's funny. Who here's got a, got a landline? I mean, my grandmother does, that's fine. But I mean, landlines. Telephone industry moves to ban internet phone software. This was in 96. And of course, uh, this was from, oh gosh, Bill Mark Andresen, Netscape. Netscape's technology said, you're not going to ban us and it's going to be around everywhere. It's going to be voice over internet protocol and uh, good luck trying to ban us. That's hilarious. And they really tried and they took them to court and they lost. So the same thing with, I mean, you'll, you'll hear like India trying to ban uh, Bitcoin. And of course, they already went through their whole thing and the, the central banks are still trying. But the, uh, uh, the uh, Supreme Court of India said, no, it's not going to happen. And then, of course, there's this one. Just so you understand really how early you are in this game. This was uh, in April 1963. They said, you'll be able to carry a phone in your pocket in the future. And 21 years later, it was announced you could actually do that. 1984, first commercial cell phone. So um, just so you know, it's been 10 years for crypto. I mean... 
Bitcoin was in 2009. Now there's second, there's there's uh, you know second tier blockchains or third generation blockchains. I think there's a fourth generation blockchain coming up, and things just accelerate much faster. So we've had 10 years. I think we're all we're almost at the cusp, but we still are pretty darn early. Okay. So then, here's the question then, and this comes down to this: Am I should I go all in? Or should I DCA? First of all, I just what's called dollar cost average. And when I send this to Dave, he's like, English, Rob, I don't understand what you're talking about. So, so real quick, dollar cost averaging is just, you can, in, instead of buying at the top or at the middle or at the bottom, because you never know with, with markets, like this, this is 2017 essentially, right? When Bitcoin was 20,000, would you be okay? I'll just talk to Dave. Dave, would you be okay taking a hundred thousand dollars and buying Bitcoin at, at 20 grand a pop. So you'd have five Bitcoin. That's pretty good. That's pretty good in 2017. You have five Bitcoin, but here's what happened. Uh, within a month, it went from 20,000 to like 4,000. So, well, it's, I think it was about 5,000 actually. So you just lost 75%. And here's the thing. You don't lose anything unless you sell. So let's just get that out of the way. But the value went down 75%. Could you go and tell your wife, like, hey, babe, um, the 100000 I had, if we cash out now, uh, it's only going to be worth 25000 So I lost 75000 My bad. Could you mentally handle it back then? Well, of course you could handle it because you're like, well, I know it's going to go to 35000 and 65000 So no big deal. But that's just it. You don't know. You don't know right now when it's going to go up or how much is going to go up to. So I can tell you uh, price prediction. I think I know where things are going. The thing I cannot tell you is exactly the dates of when it's going to happen. I can give you a kind of a time frame where I think it is, but just a guess. So that's why I dollar cost average. And what that means is if I was smart, which I'm not, uh, if you look over here, see when in uh, 2016, actually, let's just go here, here, January 2019. This is where I really did some damage and just started buying. Actually, it was right here. Uh, right before that, when everything was just flat, all these flat plateaus, instead of just taking my hundred thousand dollars or however much I had, I would just put in 25 bucks a week into Bitcoin. And I think I put in like 50 bucks a week into Ethereum. And I also put in uh, like 10 bucks or 20 bucks into Cardano. And it seems to work out pretty well because I've been doing this since 2017. So imagine those prices back then. Bitcoin was 5,000. Uh, Ethereum was around $250, $300, and Cardano was like a penny or three pennies or something like that. It was crazy. So uh, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if it was going to go to zero or go up. Now, looking back, hindsight is 2020. I could have gone back like, boy, am I stupid. I could have taken 100000 and dumped it all into Cardano or Ethereum or 50-50 split. I would have been a multi-multi-millionaire. True. My friend Diddy did that in 2017, the very beginning but you don't know where it is. In the long run, can you mentally handle it? Well, if you can, then uh, then that's up to you. And you could definitely you know, dump this in. Again, investment opinion, not investment advice. I'm not telling you to dump all your money into, geez. I'm just letting you know that if you do this, you're gonna be waiting a long time and it's gonna be tough mentally to get in your head like, oh my God, I'm down 50% today. No big deal. No big deal. I'll just, I'll just ride this out. Can you do that? Well, if you can, then all in is pretty fine. If not, I personally dollar cost average because I can find some great deals. Like, look, um, I if I buy up here, that's cool at 20,000. Then I buy at maybe 10,000. Then I buy down here at 1,000. So my average cost of what I bought Bitcoin is around 10 grand. So I don't feel so bad. And I have a little bit more leg room to play around with and do these things. So that's what I talk about is, going all in or dollar cost averaging. And then I will say this, dollar cost averaging is safe. I mean, a little bit safer. Here's another thing. These products that we talk about as far as crypto, just know that they could, I mean, look, in 2017, there was everything was going to the moon. And I got into a lot of different things. And a lot of those things went to this zero. So just be aware of that. So there was a study and lump sum versus DCA. When investing a new sum of money for 20 years, 20 years, immediately dumping it all at once in a lump sum has outperformed dollar cost averaging 71% of the time. It's pretty good, right? So, you know, three out of four times, you're gonna do pretty well. 
but unfortunately, well, two out of three, I guess, three out of four or whatever. And then 30% of the time, one out of three times, uh, dollar cost averaging. So here's the question. Which one do you want to do? Do you want to be a gambler and go, you know what? I'm going all in on crazy, wacky coin because it's going to the moon and I'm at 100,000. I know it's going to go up. And then guess what happens? It goes to zero, like what I saw in 2017 and 2018. Or you're like, you know what? I'm going to spread things around, maybe a little bit uh, more safer play and do that. Again, it's up to you. It's all up to you. So the question then is, what do I invest into? What do I actually invest into as far as, uh, you know, crypto and digital assets? So this is where it comes down to you got to do your own research. And there's a website, I think that spins above my head constantly. Dan teaches crypto.com. You know, it's 100% free website. I created 100% free. It'll always be 100% free. And I put it on all my, my best basic information that I can possibly get and stick it in the members area. And all you got to do is click on this big orange thing that says start learning. You sign up which is I just need your email and I do not spam you. All I do is I send you emails when I have a new video. And then here's the members area for do your own research. Da, da, da. We're looking at uh, module four reviews. That's what it is. Yeah. And then the very first video is I talk about how to do your own research. My friend Ian Bellina helps me out and he shows us what he does as far as like his own research, which he has two different methods, the free method and there's a pay method. I just use the free method, but if you want to check out, yeah, that's, that's fine. So that's the big thing. You got to do your own research and I'll just, the, the basics, the, the basics is this, as far as like research, here's what you got to do. Here's what I do. I invest in people. If you have a small, have a, have a great team who has already done things before and you are actually making a headway and doing great marketing and you have good advisors, I'll probably invest into your, to your startup. That's essentially what all this stuff is. That's what I look for. But then, there's also a thing talking about tokenomics and does this thing actually have real world utility? Has this gained traction? Does it have a good community? We talk about all those things in this video and that's what you need to do to decide where you should invest you know, your money. You need to do your own research. You cannot listen to what I say and what I do uh, because I'm not 100% uh, perfect all the time. Go figure, I do make mistakes. So it's up to you to do it and uh, go from there. And then lastly, I will just say this, even though I do make a ton of mistakes, I can just give you my, my best guess and the things that I've done are cryptos that I have invested into. So when we take a look at that, here's my price predictions. And again, I can only tell you kind of a time frame. These are all guessworks about where I think. And I take a look at the, at the history of what crypto has done in the past, what is doing right now, what kind of uh, different partnerships and all the different things that has happened in that crypto, the real world utility, what's actually doing. And then of course, what it has as far as like uh, its timeline and what it's gonna do. So this, I've had two different uh, uh, price predictions. There's a video that I just did an updated one, a couple of videos. And the big thing for me is look at the probability and look at safety. So again, what are your goals? What are your goals compared to my goals? If your goals are to be a little bit more risky, then uh, these probabilities may not really matter to you. Maybe you're like, you know what? I want to take a look at, let's see, what else would be a good one? Like an IOTA, right? An IOTA could go up uh, massively. So maybe, or maybe a, a, a BTT, or maybe a Filecoin, or maybe a Mana, whatever it is, right? You say, I, I'm just going for the big swing for the fences types of gains, or I'm just going to put maybe that out of that 100,000, or that hundred bucks per month, I'm gonna break it up. Maybe 20 bucks is gonna go into uh, mana. And then maybe like 50 bucks is gonna go into Ethereum. And then I got 30 bucks to play with and I'll put that between Bitcoin and Cardano and Chainlink, whatever. That's up to you, right? Um, but for me, if it's like I'm weighing between the gains that I could get and the probabilities and the safety, what has been around for a long time, what are on the tips and tongues of all the different investors and institutional players that are getting into the space and everything like that. Bitcoin's pretty safe. And the thing is, it's at, well, it's at uh, the today's price around 32,000, we'll say. And I think it can go between 130 and 150 K. And also Alex Mashinsky over there at Celsius thinks it can go to 160 K. He thinks I'm very conservative and some people think it's going to go to hundred K. So whatever. So if it was me and I had hundred K, uh, first of all, let's just stick with that. I'm not going to talk about Airbnb. So let's just say with Bitcoin, 
I would probably put in a if I could dollar cost average right now, because I don't know where where I'm going to. I would probably every week I'd put in thousands of dollars into Bitcoin. Really, actually, you know what? Let's go. Let's go back. If I had a hundred k, I could dollar cost average, or I could just do what's called value cost averaging in. Maybe I take four lumps: twenty five, twenty five, twenty five, and twenty five. That's called value cost averaging, and I just say, you know what, Bitcoin, and I'm gonna see where it goes, because I think at the end of the year it'll be okay. If I can mentally prepare myself for twenty percent drops. 30% drops, 70% drops in value, but I know it'll go in the long run, I'm okay. So I'd say like uh, Bitcoin, I put 20, I put 20K into Bitcoin, me personally. I would also take a look at Ethereum and Cardano. Does anybody believe that Cardano and Ethereum aren't gonna go up at the end of the year? I mean, look, if, uh, Cardano, people say, well, no, it doesn't do anything. Well, look, smart contracts are coming. So I think just on top of that, we're gonna see, it was already 250, why couldn't it double again? from 130 to 260. I, I don't see how that could not happen by the end of this year. So if I wanna do it, I'd probably put uh, about 30 into Cardano, 30 into Ethereum, and then maybe 20, maybe 10 to Chainlink. And there's this other one called Voyager, which I'm always talking about because utility. I've explained myself a lot of times. I put into there. So that's if I wanted to value cost average or just put in like, like one big dump. If I wanted to dollar cost average, I would just split it up. I'd split it up between Bitcoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, Cardano, Voyager, and there's a multiple ways to do that. I could just put a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, five thousand per week into Voyager. Or if I only had a hundred bucks uh, a month, I would just say uh, twenty dollars in Bitcoin, twenty Ethereum, twenty Chainlink, twenty Voyager. Because look, you know why I'm doing that? It's because uh, my money's on fire. So why wouldn't I just? put it in there and then dollar cost average. So again, uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it. And then if you're more of a gambler, you know, you look down and say, well, what else is out there that could uh, really do some things? I think Solana, Solana could do great things. And that's the big ones as far as this. The other ones, I think a little bit more risky, maybe not StormX. I think StormX is gonna do pretty well. Do well. World Mobile Token, they're just launched, so I can't even tell you. Meld is risky because it just launched, so I can't tell you. And then uh, go from there. So that is it. That's what I would do. So Dave, I hope that helps you. But again, this is uh, investment opinion, not investment advice. But uh, I'm just a cautious person, and I believe in what's going to happen uh, coming up in the future. And that's really all I can really tell you because... I don't really care about the swings day by day. I don't care about the swings month by month. I just look at the very big, huge picture because yeah, I'm just an investor. And uh, I think things are going to uh, do massively well uh, in the crypto digital asset space. Just follow my channel, watch the daily news, watch the different things, watch all the banks that are getting into it, the institutions, the hedge funds, uh, governments, Venice, you know, not Venezuela. Uh, Paraguay and El Salvador uh, are getting into, I mean, El Salvador even has legal tender for Bitcoin. So if you don't think that it's going to go pretty far, especially what we just talked about, then uh, I would tell you. Anyhow, that's it. I know it's a little bit, little bit long, but it was important that we talk about all these things uh, moving forward just to get everybody the right mentality. So if you liked the video, found value, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive as far as the news stories. And that's it for today. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.